Hello and welcome to Inside Out Northwest with me, Diane Oxbury. Tonight, we investigate how elderly and vulnerable people are being conned out of their life savings by postal scams. Look at this. This is the volume of mail one person received in just six months. They've been described as the invisible criminals, and every year they con thousands of elderly and vulnerable people here in the Northwest out of their life savings by offering large prizes in return for a small investment. Those involved hide behind postal scams very cleverly disguised as competitions or investment schemes, and they usually promise a guaranteed cash windfall. But as I've been finding out, the only guarantee for those who fall for such scams is misery and heartache. This is fraud and it's done in such a sneaky manner. You know, it's evil. Scams can take on many different forms, ranging from telephone and email deception to mail order and postal fraud. I think most of us are familiar with that begging email from overseas promising you your share in a large fortune in return for a small cash donation. Well, ones like that are pretty obvious, but they're not all that easy to spot, and the scammers are very good at getting people to part with their cash. David Kenny has been the victim of scammers for five years. He lost more than £36,000 on an investment scam in 2009. In an attempt to recoup his losses, he responded to a different scam, informing him he'd won £48,000. To date, he hasn't received a penny. So, so how do these work? You get a catalogue and you can buy things out of it. You've got to buy something out of it and you go into a competition where, where your, your, your number can come up. Well, there are lots and lots of letters here. Winning documentation, your status of winner is confirmed, confirmation of a prize win. Yeah. How much have you managed to win over the years? Well, I haven't, I haven't, won, I haven't had anything yet. Right. right. I haven't had anything yet. Sadly, David's not on his own. According to Citizens Advice, the number of fraud offences reported in England and Wales increased by 25% last year. Over 200,000 cases were reported by the victims of scams to action fraud in 2013. But this number is thought to be just the tip of the iceberg. It's believed only 5% of victims admit to being caught out by the scammers. Citizens Advice has calculated that up to 4 million people could be scammed every year, with many either too embarrassed or ashamed to report the crime. Now, if you're in any doubt as to how prolific these mail scammers can be, look at this. This is the volume of mail one person received in just six months. Bags and bags and bags, stuffed full of envelopes. Authorisation order form. That's for your release, that's to release your money. By the time Jessica Look died in 2007, her life had been taken over by scammers. During the space of five years, she received 30,000 letters promising her large prizes if she sent back claim orders with a cheque or postal order. Her family estimate she lost more than £50,000 to the scams. Five years before she died, she received a letter, uh, told her that she won a competition and all she had to do to claim the prize was send off a small fee. Um, her mother did this and as a result her name got put on what's called a suckers list and got circulated to other criminals worldwide. So literally she was bombarded with uh, scam mail um, and it escalated very quick. Um, it went from um, maybe two or three letters a day to probably, I saw 30 letters going through on one day. So the house started to fill up, the shed was full, um, the drawers, the cabinet, she was hiding it, it was underneath the bed, it was wherever she could put it out of sight. Towards the end, as it were, for my mum, um, there was one time that I went into the house and she was washing a, a clairvoyance letter in hot soapy water. When I asked her what she was doing, she said she was removing a curse, she couldn't afford to pay for it. She was too scared to go upstairs, they told her there was an evil force upstairs. The whole thing was a nightmare, but you've got to remember there was no help. After her death, Marilyn set up the Think Jessica charity in her mother's name to warn others about scams and to campaign for something to be done about them. 
the houses that we go to and victims get alerted to, you know, we can go in houses that literally you can't get through the door because the scam mail is piled so high. One person we spoke to didn't want to be identified because of the grip the scammers have over her mother. She's sending money away to criminals. Mum won't see that. Mum doesn't understand that. She says, that's not happening to me. These are my friends. She sends them birthday cards. She sends them thank you cards. What's she thanking them for? Because effectively, she's not really receiving anything in return, is she? They'll send her a letter and they'll say, we want to send you some good fortune. And in this good fortune, if you purchase this talisman for 30 pounds, I can almost, almost guarantee all the wealth in the world for you. So my mum will send a thank you card thinking, they'll think this woman is so sweet, she sends a thank you card. Let's give her some money. And now we're 20 years down the line. Can you estimate how much money your mum has spent? A full chequebook maybe a month. I would estimate maybe more than 350,000. Good grief. She can't have that money to burn. She doesn't have that money to burn. I asked her to surrender her chequebook and I said, it's very hard for me to do this, Mum, but it's the chequebook or me. She said, what sort of question is that? What a threat to have to make to your mum. It's heartbreaking. According to Think Jessica, more than £10 billion a year is going to international scammers, much of it from the hands of vulnerable elderly people in the UK. What about the mail delivery companies themselves? What responsibility do you think that they have in this? There's been a lot of money made handling and delivering this stuff. And I think it's, it's definitely going to be payback time now. They've got to start putting more, um, uh, more, take more action to make sure that these people are protected. So why can't mail delivery companies do this? Why can't they intercept scam mail and stop it from being delivered to victims in the first place? I put this question to the Royal Mail. We have to hold the view that our customers, um, if they're living an independent life, they're essentially able to make their own decisions. So there's only so far that we can go, but certainly we've always put people in contact with agencies such as Training Standards who could take action on their behalf. And more recently, we've developed systems so that we, we actively um, identify people who may be being exploited and we bring those people to the attention of the, of the authorities. I understand what you're saying, but it seems very frustrating when I have had in my hands bags and bags and bags of mail that families have been storing in sheds because they can't bring themselves to look at it. And this mail is franked and labelled and so obvious. You're the guaranteed winner of £50,000. No one's the guaranteed winner of anything. Well, I hear what you say. Um, unfortunately... But that's so obvious. Someone is delivering that through the door and it's branded, it's labelled. You're talking about other organisations and other agencies being involved. The postman or the postwoman is the person who walks up the drive and puts it through the door. And it's so transparent. Well, it's not so transparent. I mean, that, that's the whole point. It is, though, Tony. A lot of it is. Uh, let me be absolutely clear with you. It really isn't so transparent. It, it, it's interesting when you bring a legal perspective to view on this, the, the items that are not considered to be fraudulent and therefore which we are duty bound and legally bound mm -hmm. to deliver and the differentiation between those and the items which, which clearly are actually exploiting customers. Hello, National Trading Standards Scam Team, Louise speaking. Today, the Royal Mail and Trading Standards have announced details of a joint initiative aimed at targeting scam mail and helping the victims who receive this post. So we're working with them to educate their staff so that they know what to look out for when we're talking about scam victims. Because there are some telltale signs, like the amount of posts that a scam victim might receive. Um, so we're asking for postal workers to look out for those signs and then to report that into their security help desk. But Marilyn Baldwin believes many victims would be reluctant to cooperate with trading standards because they've been brainwashed by the scammers, a condition that the charity has called Jessica Scam Syndrome. What would be the perfect solution that the delivery services could offer? The solution would be, the perfect solution would be that if victims are recognised as having this Jessica Scam Syndrome, it, once recognised, these people then should be protected. Once they're not just left, to, for them to decide whether or not this sort of criminal activity can take place in the UK. Tracing those responsible is extremely difficult. 
Many of the companies involved are based overseas and most use PO Box addresses. One of the most prolific is a French company called AMA. In 2011, the Office of Fair Trading took joint action with their Belgian counterparts to obtain a court order stopping it from sending illegal mailings under the name Vital Beauty. They've since changed their name to Vital Nature. There you go, Dad. Yeah, thank you. And Vital Nature is one of the companies that's enticed David Kenny with promises of large prizes. Over the last two years, David has purchased large amounts of health and beauty products from them in order to secure the substantial cash prizes that he has won on three separate occasions. We asked them what has happened to David's prize winnings. And just before broadcast, they told us this. Vital Nature mailings contain clear and explicit rules which explain how the prize draws work, the closing dates and how to enter without placing any order. Since 2012, we've paid out over £500,000 in prize money. But not, it would seem, to David Kenny. Letters like this one informing him that he is the grand winner of £228,230 are really not worth the paper they are printed on. Vital Nature says it was so concerned David Kenny was buying too much in 2012, it briefly suspended his account and at that time returned his payments. The family dispute this and he has since received more letters from Vital Nature declaring him a grand winner. We've been trying to get to the bottom of what goes on with companies like this and we got a statement from one of them saying um, their materials are of a promotional nature, there's no obligation to buy. Mm. How do you feel about something like that? That's, that's how clever they are and that's how they know they can hook people um, and that's how they cover themselves in my opinion. Do so you think that statement's misleading? Yeah, I think Very it is a misleading so. statement because it's not actually about the products. That Dad's not, not buying them because he wants a load of gnomes and, and smelly bits in his house. He's buying it because he thinks he may be. In, in, in a with a chance to win. He's a victim, he's not a criminal, he hasn't, he hasn't done anything wrong.